Um, huzzah. Hello, world. It's Christina. Welcome back. <laughs> I have my lovely friend Eve uh, here with us today. Um, we have both been camera assistants in New York City. Uh, and I just thought I would love to talk to him today and talk about our careers and where we think our industry is going and all the stuff in between. So for anyone that doesn't know you, Eve, do you want to maybe explain a little bit about how you got into this in the first place? Like where you, like where you started on set? How did you find set? Yeah, sure, sure. Um, so thank you for having me, first of all. Of this is super fun. It's glad to catch up. I'm glad to catch up with you. Um, and yeah, I work as a camera assistant in uh, New York City primarily. Uh, but I did start um, after I graduated uh, school for fine art uh, from Parsons. I needed a job. And a friend of mine, um, I was, I was uh, working as an intern at Milk Studios. Oh, cool. And, like an equipment room manager or tech, whatever. And he uh, hit me up and said, hey, listen, I'm leaving this job. And um, uh, would you be interested in working at Saturday Night Live? And I was like, what? Yeah, you know, I had no idea how sets ran, you know, and I said, you know, I, I'll come by. I was, I was primarily a photo assistant, um, and, that, and that was my first time going on to a set. And I ended up working for um, the photographer who shoots the bumpers uh, for all the guests. So she shot, I think she still shoots all the celebrity guests that come on to um, onto Saturday Night Live. And I was her photo assistant, and we had interns. And then I ended up working for the camera team, uh, like later on down the line. But yeah, that was like my first job on set. And I didn't even know that was a thing. I didn't even know that existed. That was my first time seeing like mo like really big cameras on peds, you know? And um, yeah, it was, it was really interesting over at 30 Rock. But yeah, that was, that was my start. And then I took a long break uh, where I was working in the arts like for uh, galleries, like Deech Projects and like Worcester Street Projects um, downtown and like so and so. And um, I eventually came back to um, to working on sets through, man, I, I have no idea, but I ended up in Connecticut on a Wes Craven movie, on his last movie. Oh, really? Um, okay. As an office PA, you know? And after working that movie, they said to me, listen, we know you don't want to be an office PA. Yeah, we know you don't even want to be a PA. You know, this is obviously not your thing. What do you do? And I was like, I want to be in camera. And you know, whenever a PA says they want to be in camera, everybody's like, yeah, 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 okay, whatever. But they introduced <laughs> me to this amazing um, AC. He's a legendary first AC. His name is Bobby Mancuso. Uh -huh. And he was pulling focus on the show. And he said, give me your name and number and give it to my second at the time, Scott Tinsley. And he'll call you if something comes up. And so they called me on their next project, which was like uh, uh, Sherlock Holmes. And I was the camera PI on that. It was, it was interesting. That's wild. <laughs> yeah. Those are like legends in New York. Wow. Yeah, I got, I got really lucky. But it was mainly because I talked too much and just like didn't know better. So I just would like bump into people and be like, yeah, I, I take pictures. I love, you know, I love camera. Teach me things. You know, teach me things, I'm down, I'll do whatever. And that was pretty much it, you know? But yeah, that's what it is. I'm a, like an art kid, basically, that knew I needed a job and I didn't want to do anything else. So I just bugged as many uh, camera people as I could until they got me work. And that's kind of what I'm still doing. So yeah, I mean, <laughs> I have a very similar background too, actually graduating from a school with a fine arts degree in dance and performance. Oh, yeah. Uh, and Where'd you uh, go? Um, Hollins University. It's in Roanoke, Virginia. Oh, what? Okay, okay, no doubt. That's what's up. Uh, and uh, yeah, at, right after school, um, I moved to New York City, and oh. I actually got a job at Brooklyn Boulders, the rock climbing gym. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, and I got kind of involved with the fitness community, just as a sort of a you know this transition between uh, some sort of movement based community, and also mm. having a job. And yeah. um, somehow along the way, uh, met film people. It was also right. like, what is this world, you know, mm -hmm. going from, um, you know, a, a PA on set to an office PA and starting to talk to people and having kind of the same awkward conversation of like, what do you want to do? You're like, uh, I don't know, camera? 
yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, I was really lucky to be able to meet some really nice camera assistants, you know, and like sure. have this really um, exciting path to where I am now. Um, but yeah, I was just curious if maybe you can talk more about your own process of being a GP, not just a camera assistant or just an artist, but also like leading the charge and shooting your own work. Yeah, I mean, um, shooting my own work has always been uh, really important to me because um, I always, I basically got into the industry so I could always make my own work. So I've always had like my own practice. And like, I have a partner, his name is Fabio. He lives in Japan now, but he does visual effects. And we um, just basically pushed each other to unionize, like to get into the unions in our various um, positions so that we could keep making our own work. So like from the beginning, like we would shoot our own thing. And my, my obsession has always been with light. Like, so, um, so from the beginning of like my career and like uh, my education, I was always like playing with light, um, like making my own like light modifiers and all that. So um, I, I approached uh, my work with like an experimentation or just like kind of like thinking about like light all the time and how it affects the subject. And we would just make these like very small short films or experiments. I think I was telling you about like a dance film that we did together. It's yeah. like a five minute project called We Are Water. And it was just basically an experiment with light and visual effects and, and a dancer. And, um, and then that led to like other small projects. We projected that around different cities. And I was like, oh wow, short film doesn't have to be or films don't have to be this this thing because I wasn't trained in film like this very like rudimentary thing like it's something where I can like experiment and like and practice but my my approach to shooting has always been to like um accept everything at this point in my life um like and, but but primarily like I say yes to to like every project that comes across my desk as long as it resonates with me and um, I'm able to like, cause usually I'm getting paid you know, like zilch to, you know, like a very like modest rate, but I want to be able to, you know, um, approach it where I can experiment with light and, and at least have like a toy I can play with that will help me out in my career later on, you know, like, or- Have you um, worked with other gaffers or are you kind of gaffing your own stuff? Well, um, I always, I've been lucky where like, cause I started, before I got into the camera union, I was um, a grip for about three years or so. Oh, okay. Um, just, you know, because I, you know, I needed money and I wanted to learn uh, that, that side of things. But I always have been lucky enough to bring on uh, a more experienced gaffer to my projects. And that's taught me about lighting so much. I bet. Um, and like, you know, there's, um, yeah, there's, yeah, there's an amazing gaffer, um, Named Mike Wilson, who who's come on to a project of mine. He's worked with like Ava DuVernay and like Bradford Young and all these people. Um, there's another um, Zilka, I believe her name is. She's an amazing commercial gaffer as well. She's come on to like commercials that I've shot for like Sephora and like Mac Cosmetics, and um, she's like really pushed me to think about lighting and also just the simplicity of it too. So I've always made it a goal because I'm still young, you know, and my primary work is through ACing is to whenever I DP a project, <clears throat> which like before COVID was like at least like a commercial a quarter, you know, or like, you know, or like two a quarter or so, I would try and bring on a, a gaffer that I really respect, give them the budget that they want and the rate that they want. And then I'll take the cut on my end because like lighting is just like so important to me to like storytelling, you know what I mean? Sure. But, um, but yeah, but yeah, that's that's what it, that's my approach. Like it's that's always awesome. like story and lighting and telling stories with the use of light and like uh, you know in a way that will like get the directors um or like kind of like tell the the director's uh, story. You know? How would you um, describe that style or that aesthetic of yours? Well, I mean, um, per project. It, I don't know if I have like a particular aesthetic. What what um what most directors are drawn to when it comes to like my work is that I I shoot film on a regular basis. Like a bunch of cameras like behind me. I shoot all the time, thirty five mil and uh, one twenty 
uh, all the time. And I, I like started like loading film, like when I got into the business. So I'm always like um, shooting like with like a kind of like a documentary style or like a, um, like a, almost like a street photography aesthetic, you know, that like um, references like, like, you know, street photographers from like the like 60s and 70s or even like, you know, yeah, like the photographers who were like um, working in like the Midwest during like the, the war effort and all that. Like, yeah. I just, you know, kind of reference that. So that, that may be what they connect with, but for the most part, I try and um, just match whatever the director, uh, like I, if I look through the script, I would, I would try and bring my idea with visual references but then also try and um, make sure that it complements the director's vision, you know, if they're a um, if they're a visual thinker, you know. But sometimes they're not visual thinkers, and they're more interested in like the actors and all that. Then I try and come up with a complete package um, that complements the story, you know, as opposed to like being like too heavy-handed with my own like uh, interpretation of things or to make it match my style, you know what I mean? Like, oh. like it's not Instagram feed, you know what I mean? It's like it's their work you know it's so in their story so that's what I try and try and do for them. I mean that's something I find really fascinating because I'm not there yet in my career but I'm so uh, curious kind of about that relationship between cinematographers and directors but also cinematographers and everyone else on set you know there's all this dynamic of how you utilize this community and these tools to make a product but there's still so much work that people don't see that's ahead of time that's not just making it on the day it's all that inspiration and research ahead of time. Um, yeah. So I was wondering if you could maybe speak about that too. Like, have you felt yeah. like there's, say with some of maybe your like narrative work, um, like, you know, this is a project coming up, you get a script, maybe like, can you talk about that process? Yeah, sure. Like um, I was, you know, I've, I've been like, I told you before, I was really lucky to work with these DPs who know how to communicate really well. And that's one thing that they like really, um, told me that needs that I need to improve on which is like communication and uh, and speaking with uh, not only the director but with your you know production designer if there is one the gaffer the grip you know and then being able to like uh, uh, being able to analyze the script like what I do is like uh, like look at the script and then usually I have like a meet in my head so like oh this is like eyes wide shut meets you know, Dumbo or something, you know what I'm saying? Like, and I, and I have the films in my head. And so what I've done with a lot of younger directors is I'll send them uh, YouTube links, like of uh, scenes from the films that we could possibly reference visually and why. So like, um, for example, like when I was on um, Wall Street 2, like Rodrigo, I was talking to Rodrigo Prieto about his movie, Beautiful. And um, I had to um, shoot a short film that was in a, um, like it was like in the projects in the Bronx and they wanted to mimic the sodium vapor lights outside and then the tungsten lights in the hallway for the interior. So it was like a mixed lighting. And he taught me or told me how to communicate um, the, how, what muddy light would be and how it would mm. like, uh, how it would uh, influence the scene and help the scene um, and how to communicate that to a director, you know? So what I try and have is, is visual references um, pertaining to each scene. So I'll make notes on the side of the script. But and also like how, and like the, the words to like translate that to someone else. Cause maybe some directors don't like get that. And yeah, like yeah. That. And then I'll make a note to like pull from a scene from a film that I like, like there's this boxing script that I'm reading right now. And um, re reading it, I'm like on the first pass, I there was a traditional like path that I was thinking it was going down, but then I looked at it again and then I looked at some of the director's work before and I was like, hmm, maybe this, maybe he's not trying to go the traditional like gritty street boxing film. This is more like dreamlike and this is like more like we could go in a, in a uh, like I referenced a movie that was totally, had totally nothing to do with sports. It was like that, it's that magician movie. I'm forgetting what it was. The Prestige? Uh, the Prestige, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. wild. So, okay, yeah. Cool. So I referenced like the Prestige as far as like various scenes when the boxer was like like going through some traumatic experiences in their life and um th this totally connected with what the director was saying or wanted to say because um they did not want to go down that traditional route because it was 
the whole film was actually something of like a, a, a it was like reminiscing you know, about the past, you know, and he wanted, um, you know, something that was more ethereal, you know what I mean? So like, I usually read through the script a couple of times, take notes, and then find the references to bring together. Um, and then also what those, what those rec would require uh, as far as the budget goes and as far as like art or props and location needs, you know what I mean? And, and try and, you know, understanding the budget, which I usually am approached with, which is like yeah, a hair above nothing, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like I try and like respect that and like make it something that's not too daunting for like, uh, like a first time director or like somebody who wants to get something small done, but, but that's but done beautifully as well. How much would you say the budget informs those decisions? Or do you feel like it's kind of, it comes from both sides? Whereas like, you're thinking of something really creative and exciting to try, but then you also realize you have only so much money to spend on all these factors and tools. And I'm yeah. just curious, like, which way are you coming from it? Yeah, I mean, um, <laughs> I don't know, like, I'm, I'm not, okay. Uh, all right, I wanna make friends, you know what I mean? So I'm not a bully, you know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah. But I do let people know how much certain things cost. And also, like, with us, like, being camera assistants, we have such good relationships with rental houses, yeah. right? That rental houses have helped me out. Like, CSC has helped me out so much. TCS has, like, you know, been very, very generous. I don't know what I can say, like, recorded, but TCS shout has... Shout out to the rental houses. <laughs> Yo, shout out to the rental houses because they know how hard we work as ACs. And then, like, when you come to them with, like, uh, and you take care of them, you know what I mean? And then when you come to them with your own project, like, TCS has been very helpful. And, like, a couple other rental houses have been very helpful when it comes to, like, me being able to, like, squeeze things a bit as long as the insurance is able to cover it. But I do, um, I do try and, like, uh, have that discussion early on. And then, for example, if a director really doesn't know how much a camera's needs are, I try and like lay it out in a way that they can understand and then show them what's completely like what's absolutely necessary and then what can come off, but also what the what the project will like what they'll have to sacrifice and how it'll affect the project visually. You know what I mean? Yeah, of because, course. Because when you're on a low budget, like, you know, you wanna put everything in, in front of us in front of the camera. Like everything has to all the money has to be in front of the lens, you know what I mean? So like, yeah, like we don't need Chobani, you know, yogurt, like, but like, you know what I'm saying? Like, but hey, maybe those like, you know, that those ro those roses or this whatever, like prop that costs the same as whatever will, you know what I mean? Will like uh, really influence the scene. So, you know what I mean? Oh, totally. I mean, I think it's just so, it's so curious when you work on some like big budget tier three, like, all the money projects, uh, you know, whether it's a, a film or a, a TV show, and when you see how much money people are willing to spend and the work they make versus when you work on indie sets, on commercials, on student films and whatnot, and you're seeing how creative people can get with how little they have, you know, it's really yeah. interesting to see certain decisions, uh, what drives them, whether it's the lack of something or having so much of something else, you know, it's kind of... Yeah. Curious to see them both, you know? I mean, especially when you AC on something like that and then you DP other things too. Yeah, most definitely. Like, um, if I could just share one more example. Yeah, of course. Where, where, like, the another way I got into being able to, like, just get what the necessity of a scene is and, like, bring it down to budget is through, like, I used to AC um, during this thing called the Director's Lab at Sundance. So okay. every summer for, like, three or four years or so, I would go to the to uh, Utah um, and to Provo, Utah, where they had this thing where they would bring in like eight or nine uh, young directors with scripts, and they would workshop these scripts. And we would do these exercises. Like one exercise was was called like Asabuko, and we had to basically the directors had to write a quick uh, like a short script, and we shot in one room, and we had very limited props and lighting, and we had to work. We had to shoot two shorts. Um, within a day for um, for two different directors all in wow. one room props and that really got my mind around um, being able to use like what you had like with minimal equipment crew props you know art 
you know what I mean? And being able to like adapt and make things completely different just with like problem solving skills, you know what I mean? Like, which is like what we're basically getting hired for, you know? I mean, I just, I just find it really curious about the, the type or the side of your brain that's used, especially to me, I think of in school, you know, especially art school, you know, in these, these laboratory environments when you're really forced to, to think in, in different boxes and what is the box in the first place? And then you kind of yeah. come into these other phases of your life where it's so much about the paycheck and the time of a job and who is on the job. And it's, I always find it refreshing when not only you meet other people that have the attitude, but people that sustain that. You know, and I think that's something yeah. I find really profound about continuing art practice. And not everyone on set is an artist in that way, but I mean, I, I know how inspired you are, but can you speak about some of the things that you do for yourself to stay inspired to like not get like really bogged down with like the, it's weird to say because it's in, during COVID now, but you know, we're working all the time. You're like, oh, another set, another 17 hour day. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a good question. I mean, I guess uh, like, like I was like my, my art projects, like my own personal work is so important to me, keeping it up that, um, that I take notes while I'm on sets for TV shows. Like for example, when I was on like Almost Family for like five months, last year um i would you know it was like 60 70 hours a week you know how it is on on sets and so i would like take notes and um keep my ideas uh so that when i had time off to get back into my studio practice i would so like i still paint you know um i love shooting like on film i haven't shot um people in a while because usually i would take one of my cameras and go out or you know take my polaroid camera and go for a walk but I've been making cyanotypes, you know, like any like alternative photo process I would like just get into just to like make things with objects and look at like shape and form and honestly just to have fun and blow off some steam, you know, for real. Oh, and I love, I still like playing with light. Like, like you know, that some of the grips or gaffers would be like, you know, you talk to them and they'll give you like a, some gels or whatever, like, hey, we're not using this gel. You know what I mean? Whatever. I don't know why I gave them that voice. <laughs> no, I have some gels at home too. I just think it's so funny. Yeah. I was like so stoked one time. I was like, yeah, of course I'll take these extra gels. Like yeah. I just remember them covering up something and there's so much waste on set, you know? And it, yeah. I understand that generally on like a big production, if it's a big light, uh, they're mm -hmm. maybe covering up a frame or a specific fixture and there's so mm -hmm. much that they don't need. Uh, yeah. And on big scale productions you don't really need the scraps but i was thinking mm -hmm. like as an artist or as an indie person like it's like oh my god i would love your scraps and i just think oh. it's funny that now it's like i have all this these pieces of things and i'm excited to play with them yeah you, i mean you should like uh, when i was on almost family i took like two days off and over the long weekend i went and shot a short and when that when because i usually like try and keep that to myself when i'm on a job but the gaffer heard and he had his best boy go and like cut me like some 216, 250 and some opal and like bundled it up and gave it to me right before I left set, you know? So I was, I was oh, like- Set bouquet, that's so sweet. Yeah, it was, it was beautiful, yeah, I like that. Yeah, it was, it was a set bouquet, it was beautiful. And I used it on set because that stuff is expensive, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, so that's like, why I always find it so exciting and also like really important to be friends mm -hmm. with other people in other departments on set sure. you know like i think especially coming from not like exclusively looking at camera as like the only thing like i mm -hmm. really i feel like i'm fortunate that i got a sense of kind of set in other departments before i sort of like chose but um in that it's just so cool when you get to meet these other people and see what they do and be like oh my god you have extra of this or how cool is that you know and yeah yeah I've always found that's like the fun part, which is sort of also the impetus of this series, you know, is talking to people, really uh, admiring what they do and being able to share that outside of sets, you know, because oh, yeah. like even Absolutely. in the relationship with you as a friend and a colleague, uh, you know, we don't work with each other all the time. You know, sometimes we get to work with each other. Sometimes it's almost in passing uh, and you're lucky if you, you really like click on the same wave with someone and you're like, oh, cool. I can't wait to like keep up with that. But sometimes right. you're just working so much you don't have time. No. You know, uh, yeah. like it's why yeah, I was no. just thinking about the the project I was on right before COVID. Um, 
we were just, it was, you know, season one, brand new show, still untitled. Mm-hmm. You're slating it as untitled. We'll see what it turns into, if it ever turns into anything. Uh, cool. And some of the people on that crew, like, we were just running so hard at the start of something that I really hadn't, like, gotten to know them yet. You know, all the little things about what their family life is like, what they do when they're not working. Yeah. Um, just, like, kind of, you get a certain sense of, like, their personality when you spend... 60 hours a week with them but like really who they are sometimes you it takes a little time you know some people are just like clicks you know yeah oh but speaking yeah. of uh have you found in your career so far um a certain person or job has been like your longest collaborator or something that's been maintaining to this day well i mean um i do like um have like a few people that i can like rely on for like uh like advice when it comes to like technical advice or like kind of maneuvering like the political world of it all like my my collaborative partner though like who's been on my level since the beginning um has been my friend uh fabio perez he's uh like visual effects and he was he ended up uh like we started peeing together and then he ended up as a visual effects supervisor for like marvel like jessica jones and all that oh that's amazing Um, You know, but then as far as like shooting goes, I've had people that have been bringing me on as like loaders to most recently, I was a camera operator with um, Hans Charles. He shot for um, a bunch of amazing um, directors um, and uh, he brought me on as an operator recently, but he's always been giving, he's always given me um, advice from being an AC all the way to, um, to how to like light and how to speak to directors and you know, maneuver that whole world, you know? Um, but yeah, like, I've had like a, a couple people who are, have like kind of been in my corner uh, for a while that I can like reach out to, <clears throat> you know, uh, and just ask for advice. But, you know, it's always, it's always good to have people that you can kind of like reach out and touch, you know? Most recently I've been trying more to like speak up and, um, and like and meet new people. Too. so like travel a little bit and talk about what I do because like once you are on a show for like six months it's just like your circle just shrinks so yeah so get out there and like Actually, meet that's uh, a really good way for me to transition into my next question for you oh, okay All <laughs> right. about, about community I mean this is this is part of it doing the work but I'm yeah. just curious how um how you've done it and maybe just speaking on how that sort of recycles and like gives back because I know I really do know what that's like of being on something and kind of like losing track of where everyone is in the world because you're like on a project like this for so long yeah yeah the longest I've been on something was maybe six or seven I mean as a camera assistant I think as a PA I was on something for a year which was nuts but Mm -hmm. um, uh, I just I know that you have a pretty strong social media following uh, and I'm just curious about how you kind of work with that and your community at large no i will um hmm, okay i'm not i'm not sure if i'm answering your question the right way but like i definitely think it's important that like um like i feel i feel like like representation is important to me like in this building oh in this building representation is important to me in this building and uh, like in this business and yeah. uh, like when i got into it i did not um see any like black camera assistants until i worked um actually it was like a, a bt job i was hired for and that's where i met hans charles and there was a dp who was another legend his name is arthur jaffa he was dping that um he's he's amazing like uh he's like a lighting master um but yeah i was like whoa this is a thing and then he was working on the red one i think and i was like the camera was just like so foreign to me i was like this you know this is like a world that i didn't even know existed and there's somebody that looks like me and you know he spoke french too like french background as well uh haitian and um being able to like see like myself in a sense in a position that i didn't even know um existed um and that was before i i you know worked on the west curving job that kind of like uh pushed me to like think bigger and just explore really what's out there so I've like made it like a mission of mine to try and put myself out there. Although like in interpersonal relationships, I do more like, I like to observe and like, um, you know, listen to other people, but also just to put my work out there and put what, what I'm about out there and what I do 
so that like uh, it could possibly like encourage others and give people like a, a like a kind of like a small like view into like this world that we're in because it is still like alchemy like TV and filmmaking you know like I was the kid who watched like the extra sections of the DVDs just to like see the you know people working in the background um, and I hardly saw like any like women or black people like in the camera department but it was still fucking cool like and I wanted to do it you know what I mean so I think that that's really why I kind of push myself um like to be visible like online you know and like talk to people and also because you know like speaking to people like yourself and like other assistants around the world like it definitely informs your practice too like I definitely don't know everything I didn't go to school for film you know and like I like to think outside and work outside the box like I really don't subscribe to like a lot of the old school kind of like rules of the game but I do want to understand them so it's like having a lot of people to talk to is like super important to me for real no I, I just find it really uh it's exciting, you know, and it's inspiring too, because I know, uh, I mean, in my own experience, um, I didn't, I don't really think I remember meeting any female camera assistants at the start or even noticing. Um, and I was, I've been really fortunate in the allies and just really generous people along the way, no matter their skin tone or gender or whatever. Um, yeah. but it is still wild every now and again, watching some behind the scenes video and being like, spotting them out, like, oh, wow, look, girl. Like, it's just still nuts yeah. that like, you know, you're like, oh, you know, someone of color, like, wow, you know? And it's nuts that like, it's 2020 and we're still like, ex like excited about that. I mean, it's something that to always like be even more excited about and it's, it'll be such, it's so much more than norm now. Like I. I was really fortunate that the job I was on right before COVID mm -hmm. was probably the most diverse and uh, like balanced crew I've ever been on. It was like nuts. Mm -hmm. There was at least three or four women in my department, a bunch of Latinas. Like yeah. it was just so like so neat to not only have different languages spoken on the walkie, but mm. it not just being a boys' club. Like it was just so so cool, you know. Yeah. And it's yeah. funny that it's definitely it's taken time to get there, but it's also about being visible with that too, you know, and, right. you know, being a part of the uh, local 600 like women's group has been yeah. really helpful for me too. And I imagine, um, have you been a part of the, um, like the young workers committee? Yeah. 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 Um, Kai Hall, um, she, she like recommended that group to me, you know, um, there's like, yeah, it's important. And like the more of us like that are working behind the scenes, the more we can like change various narratives that don't really like, like, like that don't really suit us. And like, you know, even though like we're not in the writer's room, we do have an influence over these projects. It's, it's super important, you know what I mean? Like for real. And like we're paving the way for the future too, so. Yeah, I mean, it's cool when you see how, uh, when you have more diverse sets, there's just a different vibe. You know, there's a different energy. I feel like, you know, it also is such a personality game. And I think that's part of, uh, just making a career and networking in general but I feel like the more diverse something is the more kind of complex and interesting conversations happen you know and, and and it can also be something more than just a job you know I feel like there's certain productions you're on and it's very like the horse blinders are like I'm just here to right, right, right. But somehow I feel like when there's a bit more complexity and who's around you and why they're around you it makes you at least for myself more excited to ask to like know who they are and what they do and like what they do in their free time. Right, right. And if you think about it too, like uh, with camera, with most departments, I mean, with every department really, like we work with like some really intelligent people. And like, even though it's rare that we get to speak, I think that them coming across people like yourself and myself and being able to have like these conversations while we're creating like media um, is just like, it's really important as far as like moving like the culture forward because really we are like in in like a big factory in a sense of like putting out this like culture like you know media is America's biggest export you know what I mean so like yeah we definitely have to be like behind the camera and like and they're like in the writers rooms and like you know DPing these projects directing these projects that like uh, that talk about our world you know what I mean so like if you're there, then you know that you'll be able to have like uh, an influence on it, able to be able to like, you know, 
give it its just, its just due, you know? Well, I mean, a huge part of that, I feel like, is also um, making the opportunities for yourself. And I mean, I imagine it's the same with you, but I, I found in, in my career that, uh, you know, not having um, necessarily like a parent or someone like give me something or give me a way into this yeah. um, or like a name to drop, like you really forging certain relationships and, and forging kind of what you want from those relationships is really much on your own precedence and like how you build that. You know, and I feel like that's something that's really yeah. exciting about when you meet other individuals that are like really pushing forward that way. Yeah, no, it's good. It's good. But also it's a, it's a challenge, you know, keep real, because we are, I, f I literally feel like I'm learning every day. And it's like, um, we're in a business that's really tech heavy now and personality heavy. So like, you know, those are two things that I'm not an expert at, you know, um, so you know i'm continually learning so like i try and like position myself around people or working for or with people that will be okay with like uh helping me like to do my best on set but also like be okay with like you know giving me some of their knowledge and experience you know oh yeah that i mean that's my favorite part of working that's why like if anything i'm i'm missing a lot about not being on set is those types of conversations those oh, yeah. those uh like accidental learning moments where something yeah. is happening and you're like i know we're kind of running right now but can you tell me why we're running you know like yeah. I, i've been really so fortunate when you have some really just so like interesting individuals that really can take the time to explain like really explain the machine you know get into like well this is how this interacts with this and you're like oh wow like you yeah. like something yeah. like clicks in your head and you're like oh, that's so cool that you took the time to explain that to me thank you um no, I'm, I'm i'm right with you um i uh i got to work with arthur africano who's an amazing amazing camera operator and a genius like photographically i, I don't know how he understands blocking so well but he is just a blocking genius and that's one thing that like I struggle with, so I try and practice it as often as I can, or just or watch. And I, I just learned, because I was the A second on this job, and just from watching him, him and observing and setting up his camera, like on, uh, you know, he would always be on like the wheels, and um, I would, you know, always just observe how he looked at the room even. And um, and I, it was just a huge takeaway from that job, being able to like like understand blocking and like camera angle is so much better just working with them. So like, I definitely miss that too, you know, bro. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Well, I want to say thank you for your time, Eve. Um, per the, the format that I'm going by, I'm going to maybe like stop recording and then we can keep talking. But okay, sounds good, sounds good. Thank you for your time. <laughs> no, 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 I'm, yo, this is super dope. I love being here. Like, I love talking about, this. I could literally talk about our business all day long like i legit love what we do and like i love making personal work and i love the people in it like there are like camera assistants that i've like met in passing um that like i have a lot of love for you know and i wish we all lived closer so we can make our own work but i think that this these conversations like this are like really important so keep it up i'm all about it thanks man <laughs>